I mean, Paul, this protest is going ahead, uh, whether the government wants it to or not. What's your predictions of what could happen tomorrow? Do you think it's going to be peaceful? Do you think everyone there is well-intentioned? Or is there uh, potential for some significant disruption? Uh, none of the pro-Palestinian demonstrations has been peaceful. In fact, we've referred to the baying mob this week. You only have to contrast the uh, pro-Israel vigils, which have been held in London, Manchester, and elsewhere. And these are peaceful, quiet. There are speakers, no heckling, no shouting. Contrast that with the uh, pro-Palestinian demos, and you've got this baying mob calling for the destruction of the state of Israel in, at times, and police seemingly unable to do very much about it. Um, I would not like to imagine what might happen tomorrow. Um, Paul, I, I don't think it's a question of the police being unable to do anything about it. They choose not to. I've been to two of these marches, and the police basically have very low police presence so far. I don't know what tomorrow will be like. Sounds like it will be rather heavy. But in the past, not many coppers there, all of them standing back, letting people chant jihad from the river to the sea, so on and so forth. Various calls to violence which are technically illegal and you'd like to see the cops do something about it. Uh, so uh, given uh, that situation and given the fact that two weeks ago uh, there was a pro-Israeli um, rally planned and the police said, no, no, you can't have your pro-Israeli rally. Why? Oh, because there's a pro-Palestine rally in central London. The, the Israeli supporters said, well, can we have it in the heart of the Jewish community in Golders Green, North London. Oh, no, no, no. That's too close to the pro-Palestinian rally. Uh, seven miles away, that is. Uh, also, we've seen coppers tearing down pictures of the poor Israeli hostages held captive under Gaza by Hamas, and so on and so forth. So this sort of howl of horror from the British establishment, how can you even suggest that the police are in any way biased towards Palestine. It's just not true. They are pro, they are pro Palestine biased. It, that is a fact. I've seen it. On the face of the evidence, it appears that way. I think the police are also in a difficult position because they're actually not sure what is actionable and what is not. There are grey areas and they've not had this clearly defined. On the face of it, you're, what you're saying is, is correct. Uh, I would hate to imagine this is so, but uh, I can't disagree with some of what Suella Bravman has been saying. And I think the Jewish community is delighted to have a Home Secretary of this strength behind it, uh, somebody who's unwavering in her support for the community, is right to protest or to, to hold vigils on behalf of Israel and protest about what they're seeing. But some of the scenes we've seen on the streets of the pro-Palestinian demonstrations calling for um, the, the, the river to the sea slogans, calling for Israelis to be driven into the sea. Uh, these are not just pro-Palestinian demonstrations, they're pro-Hamas demonstrations and demonstrations which justify the actions of Hamas on October the 7th. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And what I want to ask you now is, it seems to me Israel is going to great efforts to, first of all, explain how uh, a lot of the military incursions are having to do in Palestine are surgical in many respects, because Hamas hides amongst citizens quite deliberately, and also reminding journalists around the world of the extent of those atrocities on the 7th of October, showing them harrowing footage, because they're having to fight to continue to remind the world that this is terrorists that, that Israel is dealing with. What I fail to understand is when we saw the atrocities committed by ISIS, everyone was united in knowing who the bad guys were. There wasn't a load of marches saying, well, you know, poor old ISIS, poor old Syria. There was pretty much uni unified resolve against the West of dealing with these people. And yet, all of a sudden, wind forward the clock to 2023, and people seem to think that somehow in terms of the, the, the Gaza conflict, that Hamas could somehow be the good guys and that all these people on these pro-Palestine marches calling for the um, destruction of Israel are on the right side of history. How have we come to this? This has always been the case with Israel. Israel is always, uh, Israel is always portrayed as the bad guys. Um, but this is nothing new for the Jewish community in history. Um, what happened on October the 7th, most, much of the media has tended to forget that this is what it's all about. And I, I can see your next um, speaker on this programme has been to Gaza and seen 
for himself. And I've read um, other reports from our own correspondents, what they've seen out there. And they tend to forget that one of the things that has actually been witnessed by journalists visiting Gaza is what appear to be normal apartments and homes with kids' toys, the normal paraphernalia of family life. And amid all this, um, you see rockets, you see weapons, and you see other things which show that these are actually Hamas bases. Um, again, some of the uh, media, some of the TV stations are not making clear the fact that why Israel has every right to hit back at Hamas, uh, why, uh, the, why Hamas is totally wrong, why Hamas has total disregard for, pro, for its fellow Muslims. Uh, including deliberately positioning rocket launchers, arsenals in hospital grounds, in school grounds and areas of mass population, knowing quite well that when Israel hits, that there are going to be civilian casualties. And this gives the best PR that um, Hamas can possibly wish for. But the media very often tends to forget this and totally disregard it. And, you know, I'm sure you've featured on your station much of what happened on October the 7th. But when you see some of these horrific, these, these images, which, which are just too terrible to recount in many cases, you know, we've, we hear of pathologists and experienced pathologists who have been in tears having to deal with the aftermath, finding the burnt, fully charred bodies of mothers and children still with their arms entwined around each other, babies baked in an oven, and these are not just speculative. This this is fact. This is what has actually been found on the ground. People being deliberately burnt alive, babies being beheaded, people being stripped naked um, and paraded through the streets of Gaza, Holocaust survivors being captured. This is this is behavior which is unfathomable. And it is another Holocaust for the Jewish community, not the Holocaust, a Holocaust. And it's the worst atrocity that uh, the Jewish community has suffered since the Nazis. And, uh, of course, uh, many people, uh, wh why can't I put my cards on the table, me included, believe that Israel have got the right to defend themselves uh, and uh, that there should be no ceasefire unless Hamas release the 200 or so hostages that they still have trapped in tunnels underneath Gaza. Uh, but, Paul, if you will, uh, going back to the domestic situation, these marches we're seeing every... every uh, week. Uh, in a little while, we'll play you a couple of people who were marching the other day who kind of sum up our fears about these marches, that half of the people in them just don't even know what they're talking about. They don't even know what they're marching about. But I've seen these marches, uh, and uh, the, the, the primary, the prevalent overtone of them is anti-Israel. Uh, there's a lot of anti-Britishness as well. Uh, now, how does the, the uh, Jewish community feel with this strange uprising of anti-Semitism? Uh, very, very strange to me, it seems, given that, you know, y you were invaded, uh, Israel was invaded on October the 7th and the most horrific war crimes inflicted on 1,400 innocent citizens of Israel, uh, which uh, is strange that it, it has triggered anti-Semitism and very sinister, I think. But how are... The Jewish, how is the Jewish community feeling amid this strange upsurge of hate towards Jews? There is a lot of fear at the moment. Uh, the type of fear I have never previously seen. There have been uh, occasions in the past where Jewish people have been accosted in the streets after something that has happened in the Middle East. Um, this has passed pretty quickly. Now we have the situation. I'm, I'm Manchester-based, and I've seen people who do not want to wear the trappings of Judaism, the Star of David, around their necks. Um, I do have to say that the ultra-Orthodox community are still wearing their garb. They're still very um, obvious in the streets. Their presence is pretty obvious, and they're very conspicuous. But there's a definite fear, and we're, we're hearing this from readers, people who are writing in to us, um, they're worried. They're, they're worried uh, about being identified as Jews on buses, on trains, public transport of any sort. And this this is worse than it's ever been previously. But it's not unusual for the Jewish community to be targeted at times like this. But it's it's a very unsavoury situation. Uh, Paul, we're going to play you a couple of marches. who are at the uh, most recent pro-Palestine march in London. I'll be uh, fascinated to get your thoughts. Uh, take it away, the two marches. 
When Hamas invaded Israel on the 7th of October, what was your initial reaction to that? Uh, I didn't believe they did, did they, Hamas? Uh, I think so. I, honestly, like, I think I need to be a bit more clued up on like, everything that's going on. So I feel like I'm not really qualified to answer that too well. I mean, I'm not sure if I've seen anything that shows that that's actually happened or actually correct. Uh, Paul, that's kind of pathetic, isn't it? Uh, what do you feel when you see that? Um, it's not unusual. Um, without actually um, identifying the event that I was at, um, I attended a uh, dinner in London on Sunday. Uh, the chairman had just concluded proceedings. Uh, and uh, I have to be very careful because I don't really want to identify this. As he had finished, um, somebody ran towards the stage, took the mic, offered to donate money to charity if the audience would listen to him for three minutes while he uh, started on his diatribe about protests taking place not very far from where he was, about um, uh, a massacre of innocence. As I heard this, I ran towards the stage because I realised what was going to happen. Before I could, the chairman actually stopped this person I challenged this person afterwards, uh, identified who I was and what my position was, and he um, actually told me that uh, October the 7th didn't happen, it was fake news. So I have heard this before. Um, you know, we're, we're now down to the level of Holocaust denial, and, uh, now suggesting that uh, this massacre did not take place. Nothing surprises me with um, pro-Palestinians, but interestingly, one of the points you made before about some of the people protesting, not actually knowing what they're protesting about. Many years ago, I was at a pro-Palestinian rally in Dublin, and I, I couldn't believe my eyes, but on the back of some of the placards of the protesters were various slogans about uh, wage disputes and other things. This was almost like rent a mob, and I'm just wondering if some of these people who take part in these protests uh, are actually part of uh, the same rent a mob uh, yeah. crowd Absolutely, who Paul. go to any demonstration they possibly can. Couldn't Absolutely, agree more. Paul. Uh, thank you so much for your time.